I guess now we can have a little bit of light up here now, please. That was a cobbled together effort. You can see there was a few different elements. Uh, the first one uh, was the Odyssey 2050 3D uh, animated film that we're producing with uh, Costa Rican filmmakers. Uh, we haven't got much further than the trailer, but uh, we've got several invitations uh, from film festivals to show a short of the film. Uh, by March, April, we'll be attending film festivals uh, all over the place with that one. Uh, the clip with the Costa Rican singers uh, it's called uh, Our Destiny, Nuestro Destino. Uh, that was an independent effort of uh, Costa Rican pop artists getting together and showing concern and raising awareness about climate change. We've shown that all over the, the, the many different countries in Latin America. And it's, it's amazing places like big countries like Colombia and Mexico. They don't have an equivalent, so uh, people are starting to get inspired. So our embassy is acting as ambassadors for, for those guys. And uh, well, the other part was, of course, the original uh, Odyssey 2047 clip that uh, debuted two years ago at the University of Costa Rica Planetarium. It was a kind of a more interesting effect, you know, sitting back in the stars and all that, but the message is more important than the, the entertainment, so we've been taking it on the road, and it's, uh, it's never looked better than we here in the planet, I must say. <laughs> so thanks for, for taking a look at that, our little Costa Rican package, but uh, if I could uh, ask Dr. Swan to come up, please. And, Continue on. Al, we have another microphone, I think, uh, don't we, that we can use for questions and discussion? I'm not sure we need a microphone, do we? Maybe we don't. No, Anybody would, would prefer a microphone? It's hard of hearing? So far, so good? Well, I want to congratulate Bruce. I want to congratulate the Plaza for once again hosting a provocative film one that isn't always easy to take, and uh, I think the plaza has become famous for raising the bar on uh, some of the key issues in our society. And it's my privilege to have worked with Bruce a couple of times, once a couple of years ago when he had a, a fundraising effort for improving the Bluefields Prison in Nicaragua. He raised money in Calgary, and it was matched by the Foreign Office, the British Foreign Office, and actually created uh, more civilized conditions in a juvenile prison in Nicaragua, especially through separating men, women, and children. And before his efforts, the kind of conditions there can only be imagined. Uh, so I I'm honored to be part of Bruce's e effort now to, to move towards some of the issues around climate change. And as a politician now for five years, uh, it's really an interesting uh, transition for me, coming from a science background, a medical background, recognizing that a lot of what uh, our health is about has to do with what goes on between our ears and how we relate to one another and relate to the earth, and, and the politics of decision making, power, and uh, where we think we're going as a collective transferred to these representatives we call our, our aldermen, city councillors, MLAs, uh, members of parliament. The dynamic that's occurring now is increasingly showing itself to be not very effective. Uh, this representative democracy, party, politics, uh, a lot of cracks, a lot of weaknesses, a lot of inability to actually move forward on some key issues like climate change. And I heard Jim Prentice on CBC this weekend on the House talking about climate change. Wonderful speaker really clear and expressing the Canadian uh, government's perspective and saying again and again that it's all about the U.S. taking leadership and we can't go ahead of them and we have to harmonize and all very true but if we don't as individuals I guess I'm coming to and I'm seeing myself as a citizen here not necessarily as an elected person but if we as citizens don't participate in that struggle for higher levels of thinking and leadership, bringing the head and the heart together, as I think you are in some ways doing here, Bruce, a lot of emotion, a lot of, a lot of real heart-wrenching pictures that you've brought out there, and the science behind this that, that we have to somehow come to grips with and deal with some of the naysayers and the deniers and those that have a vested interest in keeping things the way they are. Uh, if we don't come to grips with that as citizens, and on the one hand, turn on the light for those that represent us and say, 
this isn't good enough, we need more action. And then on the other hand, uh, here's the science around climate change, and our best evidence is that we are on a course for destruction if we don't do more. And then the other side of turning on the light for our politicians is turning up the heat under our politicians. And I, as one politician, can say pretty categorically that I've had almost no pressure put on me regarding climate change. I've had all kinds of pressure related to uh, homelessness, uh, to water management in the province, uh, in relation to health care services. Uh, but some of these bigger strategic issues, like climate change, people have a real <coughs> difficult time, I guess, coming to grips with themselves and, and then in, in translating that into some kind of action. So what I would hope to accomplish today with Bruce's permission, because this is really his, his attempt to reach people, but what I would like to accomplish today is more of a dialogue with all of us to talk about what you've tried, what's worked, what you think is a problem with our political process, because ultimately these kinds of decisions around what we do locally, nationally, internationally, comes down to political decision making, which we've delegated to some extent to our representatives. So I'd be very interested to hear what kinds of things individuals are doing. Uh, I see Mishka Lizak back there and Ruth, who have been working for several years in churches, talking about some of the climate change and raising the level of dialogue and raising the level of pressure, turning on the light and turning up the heat on our particular challenges. And if not us, if not we in the privileged North American context, Alberta in particular, if we can't do this in a more effective way, then how can we expect places like Nicaragua and other parts of the world to take that kind of leadership? So I think we all feel a strong sense of responsibility, and the question is how do we actually translate that into action? And it's brought home very powerfully this week, of course, with Haiti and the tremendous devastation there and the struggle to know how do we help them? Uh, is there short-term measures that can help, yes, absolutely, and there has to be a longer-term plan and a longer-term commitment to, to supporting the rest of the planet uh, in a number of different ways. So all that involves political decision-making. We, as representatives, are actually translating what we think are your wishes and, and those that, uh, that don't want change into some kind of policy and some kind of distribution of wealth and, and programs and, and plans. So I think we all understand to some extent where we are, and I think there's a, there are two barriers that we really face. One is a profound cynicism about politics today, what it can accomplish, what it's willing to accomplish, but also a sense that as individuals, we are somewhat powerless, and uh, the reality of our own uh, weakness as individuals is often brought up in our face. And Haiti is one example, like what can I do, apart from sign a check, or in some cases, uh, not even sign a check, depending on what kind of financial position you're in. So that's just a kind of a general ramble about what it's like being a politician. I've been a citizen for 60 years in this province. Uh, I love the place. I love the planet, as all of you do. I want to know how to be more effective as a politician, and I'm sure you want to know how to be more effective as a citizen. So let's open it up and just talk about what people are thinking and feeling and doing about this massive, complicated issue of climate change. Anybody is welcome.